question. Can I reply? Okay. I, I, I I don't call myself a Bible scholar, right? But I have read the Bible twice completely through at a slow pace, very slow pace, okay? And from my understanding, all men are sinful, all right? Mm -hmm. By nature. You know, so uh, within a month ago, I talked with a brother in this class, and we were talking about, you know, uh, having sex outside of a marriage. And I said, what's the difference, at least based on the Bible, because Jesus did tell somebody, what, what's the difference, let's say, if, if you got a wife, you with your wife, you've been together 40 years, 50 years, or whatever, right? And you in your room, to your, and your room is private, whatever you do is just right, basically, if, you, if you're married. And now, you have a sex with her, but you got another woman on your mind. What's the borderline? Are, are you standing at that point? Yes, you okay, are. Okay, that, that's the whole point. Tell me as a man that if you were a woman, you, you're not going to deviate from that standard at some point because you have all these, what you call the imprints on your mind. You know, you, you're seeing your woman as a blind, you're seeing as whatever you whatever you desire. So when, when, as, when you make a statement about the guy saying all the sex, it's from a crazy woman. That's because his desire is having sex with crazy women. <laughs> so he's getting what he's asking for. It comes to, it, it comes down to a discipline, though. It's what you're talking about is actually a discipline. So I, so reality wise, like I said, you know, I've been with beautiful women, been married twice, so I know the difference. Like I say, it's it's the old man in cave or however you want to yeah. say. You know, if, he, if if I desire, I'm with my wife, and I desire whatever, I, I'm not committing any crime. You know. We have seen, yeah, but it's still the same. Like I said, the Bible says if you think. You, you yeah, well, see, it's because the Bible says if you lust in your heart, then then you already commit the sin. So but tell me who has it. You said no, 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 no. I'm saying no, but see, that's as long as we're trying to, you don't know, have as long to as we're start, trying to I mean, stay true to that goal. Yeah, you, I mean, you're going to slip. I mean, if you slip, you slip. Right. But if if you're doing with all your heart to try to stay to that goal of keeping that thought, I, uh, my wife now, 19 years. The relationship before her was a physical relationship. And I got saved in the middle of a physical relationship. I'm trying to justify the relationship never. Lord, she's going to be my wife one day. Uh, so it's okay, right? And mother would say, uh, no, it's not right. <laughs> but I'm trying to justify it. But if she's going to be my wife, why can't we just continue having sex? Because it's going to be, you know, and the more I said that, we started going like this. It's almost like the oh, Lord is oh, yeah, really? And he starts separating us. And the more we start becoming unalike, because I was trying to justify trying to keep the behavior going into that. Now, once I got married, oh, yeah. now, when you come out of a physical relationship, now you're in a relationship that's godly. Now, I'm not going to tell you that girlfriend can come to mind, because I'm going like, now, wait a minute, I had to actually physically say, no, no, I can't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Because if I entertain that thought, I'm pulling my thoughts away from my wife. Mm -hmm. And now I'm pulling my way, my thoughts to a relationship that doesn't even exist anymore. Because we broke up eventually, but what I'm saying, but what you're saying as far as that, that's a possibility of, of sex relationship that was incredibly great. And I got saved, broke it off because the Lord actually broke it off because I was trying to make it work. <laughs> but he, I mean, he actually almost drove me to suicide as far as this breakup. Because I was getting more and more upset because I was trying to tell him, Lord, this is my next wife. I'm telling you, this is my next wife. Why can't we? Why can't we? You know, I, and the more I said that, the more it went apart, the more depressed I got that it wasn't working. And then I'm thinking, man, I, 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 I really got close to suicide because I thought she was going to be my wife. And then once it broke, I actually had already met my wife now, but didn't even see her because mm -hmm. I was trying to make that work. And he's trying, he was really trying to tell me, but you already know your wife, and that's not her. I've introduced you to your wife, and you already met her, but you don't see her because you're trying to make what I oh, see yeah. not right work. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so that woke up, and, we, and my wife now, we've been married 19 years. Ooh, that's yeah. I, I, can I say something yeah. again? In every scenario, I don't care who you're talking to, black, white, or white, old, or young, or whatever, men have a tendency, and women too, in a relationship, especially if they're married, they, they'll tell you who their favorite is outside of their relationship. You know, they'll say, well, this so and so on. You know, you know exactly what they like. Mm -hmm. I married you because I love you. But right. this is what I really like. And you gonna tell me at some point that woman's not gonna fantasize about what she really likes. And she done told you, or you not gonna fantasize. That's why when you look at your woman, you say, I like her to look like this. Oh. And then when you start to put everybody in that category of what she wearing and dressing, now you really see what he likes. Mm -hmm. But most people are not honest with themselves. Well, see, that was see my, me? that's the problem. When I told you about my centerfold wallpaper, you know, yeah, that's the problem. I mean, even though that was a little bizarre. And then one other, now shut up. 
<laughs> you, mentioned, you, you mentioned earlier about the, you know, people looking at the computers and all this, and you know how they translate this building it up. Now, when you talk about these, well, let's say you the Catholic, those, you know, all those priests. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they didn't have a lot of computers lined up, mm -hmm. but they still had that sexual, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. of crave, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and, and so it really doesn't have. It's just time, you know. In other words, it's just. How you discipline your mind and what you focus on. Once you take that focus off with that centerpiece, now you you just gonna obviously you gonna go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, no matter what. And, and it, you can you be wrong to think that you ain't you're not sin, but you could walk around here and like I say we could be reading the Bible and praying, tapping water on ourselves and on our knees twenty four seven, and you still gonna have a lust come in. It's like I say that three seconds is still lust period. I don't care what you say. Oh yeah, so see what we're talking about is still the goal. You still goal. you still guilty. And God and Jesus Christ like you you just committed you know fornication. Yeah, but see, and, and the key is, see, Lord knows our flesh. So if if that type of situation comes in and and you you fall, basically what you're talking about is falling. You're trying your best here. Yeah, I got to look, I got to look. I got to do it, I got to do it. Whatever it is, you got to do it. If at that very second you say, Lord, forgive me, I've sinned. See, he knows we're going to fall because we're not perfect. But our only goal is to try to keep that walk. And what we're basically talking about is trying to get that discipline to walk that walk because, the, 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 like I was saying before, flesh is not going to stop. Television is not going to stop. Music video is not going to stop. All the stuff in our face is not going to stop 24-7. I had a whole new revelation about pray without ceasing once I got delivered because I said, man, now I truly understand what pray without ceasing means because we, flesh is in our face all the time. Whether, like I said, commercial television is not added to it, so there is, really is no breaking unless you would completely right. stop watching television. So, sorry. You know about the other? Well, no, no, but knowing that, knowing that it's just a part of life, we have to find a way to live, I don't want to say in harmony, but even the original sin, how much can you blame Eve for seducing perhaps? Now she's got the knowledge. Mm -hmm. and she could have came and seduced Adam. Mm -hmm. We don't really get into much detail with that. Right. But, but he you know, know, with the apple too, right? It's, 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 <laughs> and he failed. I mean, I think it's clear in the Bible how God treats authority, right? I mean, where he says there's a special place in hell reserved for false prophets, if you are a leader and you do wrong, the punishment is all the more greater. So Eve was wrong, but Adam was more wrong because he was the leader. So the, 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 the burden of responsibility by far and in large falls on Adam's shoulder because God ordained him as the head and as the leader. God actually gave the command to Adam to give to Eve. So, not that Eve wasn't wrong, but Adam had to be more wrong than Eve. But see, she had the understanding, which he didn't. How so? Because she bit the apple. She ate the apple first. Because he's the one he convinced her first. Who and did? Sir, right. and then she, right. right. And then she convinced yeah, him. she was deceived. I mean, you, you can't, the command went to Adam. Adam was the head of his wife. Christ head of the church. Pastor, I mean, if you if you just read, I'm, 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 I'll find the scripture, but it is I think it's pretty clear in scripture that if you are a leader of people or leader of your household, that you share greater responsibility for everything that happens to that household or to that congregation than the person in the congregation who, because of your mess, falls. They're wrong too, but the preacher, if the preacher is is doing wrong and causes somebody to fall. That's well. That's why. That's, that's a different why, level. That's why in Romans, in uh, uh, Romans uh, five, when he's talking about Jesus is the second Adam, he came to undo the damage the first Adam right. did, because that Adam didn't have the strength to do what you're saying. She bit the apple. He know. He, God told him, I'm, "I'm I'm putting you guys over domain, dominion." He, she's your help me. She's not over you, but for her, him to give in to her and and bite the apple as well. That means he didn't take his role and say, no, 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 that's not, we can't do that. It, I, I, it wasn't in, we weren't in trouble until he bit the apple too. When she bit the apple, okay, she did sin because God said, do not touch the human thing. But by him taking it, because he is the first and she's going to be helping him, in this case, she's not helping him, she's pulling him the wrong direction, he didn't stop and say, no, we cannot do that. And now God may have rewarded or whatever, but because he bit it too, then of course you know what happened after that. And that's why God said, Adam, where art thou? He came, he didn't say Eve, he said, man, I put you in charge. 
where are you? I'm naked. Well, who told you that? So he addresses him. We better get out your way so you can think. Yeah, so I mean, but, I mean that was, and that's kind of like, in, uh, we kind of talk about when is the sin, James 1, we've heard when James uh, 1, 14, 15, uh, but each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Uh, I, 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 I like the way it says, drawn away by his own desires, but each one of us have mm -hmm. a different past. That's right. So we all have a different qualification of what own desires means. Uh, when he's drawn away by his own in desires and is enticed, then when desire is conceived, mm -hmm. it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Yeah. So in the examples we used earlier, drawn away by your own desires is the example you gave earlier, like what a fine thing walks in front of the car. Now, if it's somebody like, I'm usually, my, my, my personal thing is, I'm drawn to look at somebody who's very similar to what was on my wall in college. That's the old man feeding the present man. Because what's walking in front of me is what used to be almost centipedes on my wall. And I know there's no accident. The devil thought that he knows exactly what we like. <laughs> He's going to put in front of us exactly what we're not supposed to look at because he knows what we like. So that's, I actually get pissed off when I see that because I know, I don't know. That's like the lady that walked when I told you I was coming over here. She was one of the types that were on my wall. So I, and the fact that I was coming to do a class on the topic, I knew that wasn't an accident. Because the devil would throw little tricks at you when we got a word to speak or to minister to another brother or try to bless somebody. We'll get a test on the way to your test to try to help somebody else just to see if you really about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what we're talking about with the deception, the, the women who are, or have ulterior motives to try to make us fall, try to just show that we can be broken, so to speak. So our mission once we've accepted to, to do this walk, yeah, we're going to be tempted. And yeah, we, we fall, Lord, forgive me, I've sinned. But you've got to say that immediately because if you don't say it immediately, the sin gets stronger, not the Holy Spirit. Because God knows we're going to fall. Hallelujah. We're not perfect. And that's why he came down to show us, if these things I can do, you can do also. And greater things, greater things, I'm going to let... You think of all the things he did that we were reading about, and he says, and greater things than things we can do? Mm -hmm. I'm going like, man, I, I can, I'm just trying to imagine the things I'm reading about. You talking about yeah. and greater things we can do? I'm just trying to get to half of mm -hmm. <laughs> Just give me half of what you did, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> but I'm just saying, to let us know <clears throat> that we got that kind of control in us, that if we ignite it and activate it, then all this stuff we're talking about that can blind, blind us and tempt us and have us fall by the wayside mm -hmm. helps us stay strong. Mm -hmm. And it's what we were talking about earlier when you say keeping Jesus as your goal to stay that walk. Because since we know we know the enemy, we know what he's gonna be doing. You know he's gonna be throwing flesh. Thank you. <laughs> and so so our goal no. is like you were saying, brother, as far as <laughs> if, if whatever Eve gives us that apple and says have a bite, we know what we're trying to do. We know Thank what our you. mission is. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I'm not about that. Thank you. No, you, you can bite that apple and I just have to find me somebody else that doesn't eat apples because, <laughs> because I ain't eating that apples. <laughs> I have come too far to fall. And so that's what I'm saying. It's not worth we bother come too far to get to this point where we are right now to walk that walk. And then, of course, the Lord will get forgiven. say forgive us and we have to start over. But my thing is having to start over. When you've come as far as you've come now in your different walks mm -hmm. to where you are now, to get that self-control and live the guided life that you're living. And... It's almost like when you see that Man. that piece of tail on front of you, like, oh, if I do that, it means I gotta start all over. And what does start all over mean to you? How far back does start all over mean to you as far as getting that guilt out, feeling that you're right with God, feeling worthy again? Because anytime I felt when I was trying to get this walk straight, I felt filthy. Because when you really try to walk God's walk, you're feeling like, oh, I'm accomplishing something, I'm really doing something. You fall. You felt like you fell off a ladder. And they're like, man, I just got up to that top rung. Now I'm back down here to step one again. Oh, gosh, I got to start all over again. But at least you're still trying to get back to that top rung. If you just stop and fail and just say, oh, forget about the ladder. That's what the devil wants. Forget about trying to get back to God's mm -hmm. grace. I just want to stay out here with the devil want me to go. Give me, give me my sex back. Give me my parties back. Give me my life back. You don't really have a life because you know what we're talking about. What life that is, you turn on damnation. But, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying, uh, when he was saying in um, the one I always bring up in Matthew 5, 28, we were talking about as far as when is it a sin. 
we've been talking about this all the past several minutes, uh, 528 through 30, Matthew 528 to 30. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery in his, in his heart. So you don't have to say anything, just like those ladies we say when, when, you, when they're walking by us, and if we, like I said, go past that three seconds, go, whoa, look at that, mm, 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 sin. Because you've gone past, that, that's a beautiful young lady, that's a nice outfit, boy, she's fine. Nothing wrong with that. God made her fine. She's a fine young lady. Like you were saying, enjoy her beauty, but once you start picturing other things beyond the beauty of what could we do later, and if I got hold of that, blah, blah, now you're entertaining what you're saying, uh, now you it, that, that desire is conceiving because mm -hmm. you feed it and it's becoming something else yeah. then it manifests maybe you may never see her again but I guarantee once that seed is planted you gotta who do I know man I got this itch man I gotta I gotta, I gotta believe myself in some kind of way now you've gone from God to think about believing yourself because the seed you planted was that question of picturing if it's not her I don't know, I know somebody like that why well, you know, she looks just like such and such oh I gotta call her and see what she's doing but you wouldn't even think about that girl if you didn't see the one that you just entertained the thought. So I'm just saying, it's all about controlling the thoughts. Get that out of hand here. I guess the question for me is one of the point of the sin. Because you see the beautiful woman, she crossed your car, you can't control oh, yeah. that. She can be beautiful, you can't control that. Right. And that's not a sin God make beautiful things. Right. So the point so is, what I'm saying, the point where is the point that the sin is? It's what you think after you say she's beautiful. Because if she's beautiful, she's fine. Well, we just got to talk about all the, all the way she looks. Yeah. God made some beautiful women. We know that a lot of Midwest Angeles. You know, <laughs> yeah. To me, my challenge is, or perception, is you really send it until you act on it. Well, no, because it, that, the, the more real it is, and the no. likely of it to happen, if you stop it, the more real you say, you say, well, but that's that's the, I'm going to get out my car and follow her. And then you say, you follow her. But see, but yes, <laughs> you stop it. <laughs> So let's just say you sit down, you're talking to her, and she's like digging you, like, wow, this is getting real, real. And then yeah, the last second, you shut it down. That shows to me you have you have trauma, you have overcame. Because it got really real now, because you could be a 50 year old man, impotent, or a 70 year old man. No, you ain't gonna do nothing. No, it ain't gonna happen. You got gray hair. She young and fine. No, it ain't gonna happen. Where's the challenge? Now, this is the question. In that scenario, you know, why did you get out the car? Well, I'm well, saying. What were you thinking when you got out the car? I mean, you didn't have the strength to stop, but to me, God okay. is a tourist. If you sit down and you say, and you walk away, and like she digging you, and you walk away, God has triumphed. But what God has was the thought when you got out the car? I mean, you were wrong. At, I mean, no, 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 you had no business to get out the car. Well, you at least you woke up. What I'm saying is, 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 in the, in, the, in the case of this me a scenario that he's given, this is a good scenario. That's good. So if if we're looking at put what, what the 528, uh, no, we're going to say the uh, Matthew 28 said, yeah. whoever looks at a woman to lust for her, the reason I'm asking you is why did you get out the car? Because if you said you see a beautiful woman, i got to get out the car. Now, what you're thinking, now, I want to meet her. Now, you're saying, I want to meet her. She looks like a nice young lady. Then, that's no sin. But, you say, man, I gotta get to know her. Boy, yeah, I gotta get to know her. <laughs> now, absolutely. <laughs> that, I mean, it's literally that, that fine line. Because if you're thinking with the goal of getting out that car is to eventually lead to a sexual relationship, yeah. that's lust at the point of getting out the car. Yeah. If you get out the car just to meet her, because, I mean, she, see, you can look at her, you can look at her, young, like, you, you, you all probably know this, you can look at a fine young lady doesn't have lust on her, and one that does, and know the difference. They can be standing right next to each other, and you know who has lust on her. Without even saying, as you're walking, you say, oh, that's the number of spirit of lust right there. And she's just standing there. And that's where we got to make the choice right there. Because once we pass identifying who's lust and who's not, and we go on to the lust, now we know what we're going to, and that's what we're going to usually lose, because now you're walking to the devil's den, because we just said, that's the number of lust right there. Which means, I'm going to play around with that. Now you're flirting with spiritual warfare because you're stepping into the devil's power because you're getting close to what you already identified mm -hmm. as being the wrong spirit. So that's why I'm telling you sin. But the, the fine line You just sat down with her and she's liking you and you can shut it down, God. 
Oh, no, 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 yeah, this I mean, victory. Yeah. If you yeah. feel like it's about to go, God gonna give you a high five on it, Dad. You my boy. You were right. You were with you. And, and then he said, "You should have got the car, but you should have got the car." He might say, "Yeah, you shouldn't have got the car, but God gonna give you a high five." Are you right. mad? Come oh, really real. Yeah, just think. No, you're right. You still were victorious. That's right. I mean, does it really matter if you're married or not? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. double wrong. You marry 100%. Yeah, double wrong. Collateral damage. Yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, you go wrong. You're wrong if you see. Leaves to death also means getting shot. Yeah, you're wrong if you see. I mean, you don't want to spiritual death. Death to death. Yeah, you're wrong. 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 Yeah, Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill Lord. Cosby. Uh -oh. Jesse Jackson. Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. What do they all have in common? Magic. Magic. What do they all have? What do they all have in common? They draw women. They're all high profile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when they're out and about, they're getting shot at. Not like we would get shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, they're different. getting shot at on a national worldwide level. Every city. So if you got all those bullets coming at you, eventually. I would say he won't fall. AC oh, Green didn't, didn't fall. Well, who did? AC Green. AC Green. AC Green. AC Green. But see, that's why they actually had a program right after. How many AC Greens out there? Huh? Oh well, I mean, I'm just saying. How many, you know, how many you know, righteous men out there? Yeah, you like saying the NBA? I still saw that. What I'm saying, if it's coming at you like that, you know. Um, Yo, you're gonna eventually. Guy. The average guy is gonna gonna fall. But right after, but right after Kobe bitch. fell, they started a program with LeBron on younger for new basketball players to step right out of high school yeah, man, into right. superstardom right. to explain why that happened to Kobe. That whole thing back when back to Ohio, where it was no. uh, uh, Colorado. Colorado. Colorado, Colorado, yeah. Colorado. yeah. Because they're just trying to show that. You know, you're from a high, uh, high school and you step into a national light, like you're saying. Right. And all the guys, Kobe, Biden, and all those guys, they fell victim to that immediately. So because of him, they started, they, they said they would start a program. All these women. That's still not going to stop the problem. Their, so sure. they want they want to let's go back to, let's go back to Adam for a second. So okay. all scripture is given for our instruction, right? So Adam, God spoke directly to Adam. <laughs> said, Adam. <laughs> If you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Face to face, essentially, spoke to Adam. God speaking to him face to face. <laughs> he still <laughs> ate of the tree, right? So when we when I think about that sometimes, and I think about how much we have to flee when it says flee temptation, mm -hmm. we gotta take that so serious. Oh, yeah. If Adam had have just thought for one second, even saying I should eat of this tree, if he just walked away, <laughs> you don't even think about it. Just walk away for five minutes. And this if it had a clicked in Adam's mind, what God had said to him face to face, you will surely die if you eat of this tree. He wouldn't have done it. If he had just if he had just followed what we later got, flee temptation, he would have done it. I'm absolutely convinced he would have done it. Because if if God himself face to face said, You will surely die if you eat this tree, that's like me pulling a gun right now and saying you will die if, if you, you don't words. give me that watch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or if you say one more word. You ain't saying nothing, right? If God himself said, eat, die. Let me ask you another question. I mean, no, that's that's the the it's like... Right. Do you think that Bathsheba has something to do with the death of her husband, Uriah? No. I have no, no idea. She I did. think that... I think that yeah, she did. She did by, by, uh, by committing adultery. That made her. That made her guilty of the same. Well, accessory to the crime. Oh, yeah. Like, Thank you. No but, way in the scripture is, is, no, she, is, no, she, is she, she saying, "No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that." Oh, that's right. No, Tony it's touched on that. That's what I was saying. Years, yeah, the debate is, on. was she out there? He touched on that. that he might. Huh? Well, he Tony the touched on that. How she was a part of. Go yeah, we're talking about the y'all. But then you go on and you say, "Too much is given. Too much whom is given. Much is required." Right. So if you take the Bible as a whole. And if you are a righteous man, which Kobe was not, obviously, which <laughs> lot, he, he wasn't. I mean, he has never represented himself as a believer in Christ, and his actions show that he's not, right? If you are a righteous man, Jackson. if you are, well, he represented himself as such, but if you are a righteous man and you have spiritual discernment, you know naturally even 
that as you go up these ladders that you're going to get all those bullets. Love them, what do you do? You start warming yourself to not Shoot. be in a situation <laughs> even yeah, yeah. where it's even going to be an option. Yeah, right? Right. So it's like you have if you're going up that level, you have to clothe yourself with armor at, at a whole different level. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, if you're a righteous man, these, these guys are not righteous but men. Even with them not being much. righteous, that's what that program is supposed to be. I mean, about. maybe just the only one that claimed it was Jesse you know. at the time that yes. things went down. <laughs> Magic claimed it now, but he didn't claim it at the time. I think, I think that. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody has been a victim of, of, I guess, falling into the flesh or, you know, seeing something and doing something that they wasn't, you know, supposed to do. But I think that what, where the problem comes in is when we make our excuses the standard. Versus looking at what the standard is. Right. Mm -hmm. The standard is saying, hey, we need to do this righteously, holy. We don't need to have sex with our wife before we get married. That's the standard. Mm -hmm. But then our humanity tells us, you know what, we may need to just have a little of this. this and yeah, you know, I, I mean, hey, I, I've been with a woman Sam. a million times, and maybe I just needed to, you know, have just a whole touch. Yeah, but, that's but, a, but a lot of women in that pre think is a deal breaker. It's the wrong woman then. Be ye not unequal. Don't be unequal. I've asked that question to a bunch of women. Don't be unequal. East Coast of West Don't be unequal. And 80% of them, so I'm saying 8 out of 10, have said it's a deal In the church. No, yeah, in the church. 80% in the church. No, not in the church. All outside of The Bible says don't be unequally yoked. I understand. You're dealing with the wrong woman. But she doesn't believe that. I missed the statistic of what you were saying. What was it? 80% of what? What? Uh, it's a deal breaker. Not, it's yeah, a deal sorry. breaker. Uh, by not having sex, they want oh, to have sex. Premarital, right? Premarital. Which is funny because it totally negates the purpose of honeymoon. So, because that means now your honeymoon is just going on a vacation. But uh, originally, a honeymoon was to consummate the marriage, which, which would theoretically be the first time you've done something like that. Yeah. But if you had sex before, then when you go on a honeymoon, it's really just about going on a vacation. Yeah, but that's saying that. Let, let me give you a really example. Let me give you a real example. Let me give you a real example. So, so I was in a relationship for a year and a half with another Christian, with a Christian woman, and her resolve to not have, at the time, her resolve to not have premarital sex was stronger than mine. I knew it was wrong, mm -hmm. and I had some <laughs> resolve, but I didn't have the resolve that she had, okay? So the two of us are dating, because I have, I have some resolve, and she has stronger resolve for a year and a half, but we didn't have sex. Now, if I was, honestly, me, this was three years ago, if, if I was in a year and a half relationship with a woman who did not <laughs> have the resolve that she shouldn't have premarital sex, I would have had premarital sex in that relationship if it was as cool on other levels as it was in this relationship. The only reason that I was able not to have is because she also had the resolve. And I, her resolve at this time was stronger than mine. So if you take everything in the word and you apply it, <laughs> so why you you, you'll, you'll make it there. <laughs> See, that ain't fair. 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 Don't answer that. I'm going to tell you right now that had nothing to do with that. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. That's a good question. Don't answer that. It had nothing to do with it. With, with lack of sex. Why they break up? Because I'm still selling. I haven't had sex. That's a good question, right? Don't answer that. I was answering on behalf. I'll tell you that. had nothing to do with it. <laughs> You're the only one that wants to represent that. I think the thing that the thing that messes up is, there is, there is, there is, is gets men Smoke and as believers is that we change the standard to 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 uh to I guess gratify our flesh. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we'll say, you know, if, at least I looked at her, but I didn't have sex with her, you yeah, know. Right. I didn't take it all the way there. I went to dinner with her, yeah. I held her hand, mm -hmm. I grabbed her by the waist, but I ain't have sex. So yeah. that makes enough sense. I only had sex with her twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, He's talking about three strikes. Right? 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 Yeah. Yeah. A little louder. I want to say louder. King David. A little louder for We're talking about righteous men. Okay. Examples. King David, who, who God says is a man after his own heart, mm -hmm. had what, over 900 wives and concubines? Well, that was Solomon's son. son. Yeah. Same family. Solomon. Solomon. Junior. He lost everybody. Junior. <laughs> 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 the the scripture that you're talking about, uh, Proverbs 16, verse 11, says, "Honor thy father and thy mother, and thy children after thee, and thy 
about, the, about the lust, the lusting in his own heart. Oh, he's talking, who is he talking to? Isn't he talking to married men? Because a lot of people do use that scripture. But when you go back to what his story is, mm -hmm. there's a fine line. Oh, yeah. Between, I mean, that's what compels a man to feel attracted to her, yeah. to pursue her in the first place. But if you're just going to condemn a man, can you look at her and say, oh, man, she's beautiful? No, that's no, no, exactly. no, 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 that's no, 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 then against her being beautiful, God, no. beautiful things. Right. 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 So for your enjoyment. Right. right. It's like you're talking about being married, taking out the car, chasing her to death. That's why I was saying that he's going to go and say, Trying to make a mistake. That's exactly what was the purpose. Stop. But I was saying, what a condemnment as far as what was the actual thought when he said, I want to get out that car to get to know her or as a goal to have sex with her. I mean, it's, it's a fine line of get to know or get, get, get to have sex as a right. goal. Well, right. But, Really what I'm getting at is the fact that a lot of people use that scripture mm -hmm. as like a blanket for all men, but I think I put that in the proper context. Who was he talking to at that time? Is he talking to a group of married men? Or is he talking to just everybody? Because at that time people get married 12, 13 years old. They're not really, you know, before then you ain't thinking about no fornication. Because you, you, you just get comfortable yeah. with the idea of <laughs> you, even exactly. touchy feeling in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to look at who is he talking to. I mean, that's just one. No, 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 it's a good point. Yeah. Love. This is a First Corinthians thirteen and four. Love is very patient and kind. Never jealous or envious. Never boastful or proud. Never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices where the truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. And so, in reference to not waiting, if you love them, you're going to wait. That means if you don't wait, you, you didn't love them enough to wait. I made that mistake. Okay, I'm and that's what God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. So if you don't love me, you're not going to do what you're supposed to do so you can get the best benefits. When you buy a car, you get a manual, follow the manual, and the car will run right. This is the manual. Bishop said it today at church. He was saying, if you got a problem, check it out. Now, uh, I, I don't know your name, sir. Fitz. 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 Okay, you know the scripture on the part where, where God said you pluck your eye out. If you're, oh, that's okay. the next part of okay. it. Okay, okay. Yeah. I want to I say that, but I want to read this word. You can you can read it, because I don't know the scripture by word. Yeah. But, you know, we all consider ourselves righteous in there, right? I think well, I ain't trying to win with the word. Now, I've been celibate for over a year, probably a little bit over that, so I know, regardless of what I say, I know how I live, okay? So now, for everybody in that claim to be, uh, Jeff, are you over there? <laughs> 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 This is for anybody. That's okay. right, man. And the question is, how many of us in here, right? Because we're all righteous. We've been in, we all brothers, we've been in for a long time. How many of us, since we know the difference of lust, right? We know the difference. And, and if you haven't lust, then you, you this don't go to you. How many of us in here decided to pluck an eye out because we lust over a woman? We know we did, okay? But we went past the three seconds or whatever. How many of us got one hour to a missing both eyes? Because we saw the word straight from the. Because the Bible tells you. Amen. I'll be for you. So, so this is one of those classic problems with Bible interpretation. When you just set the standard and go by the Bible, nobody's following the Bible verbatim. Wait, wait, wait. That's the parable of how important it is as far as sin is concerned. Go back to me. Let me read the point you're talking about. And right after we said, uh, this is 28, 29, and 30 in Matthew 5, I want to ask you a question right quick. Uh, it's the part of the Sermon on the Mount. So he's actually talking to the entire crowd when, when this whole thing about the uh, uh, chapter 5. So it's everybody. The Beatitudes, the, 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 uh, 
teaches about the law, teaches about uh, anger, adultery, divorce, all that's part of the Sermon on the Mount. So this part where he's talking about, I say to you, whoever lusts, uh, looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Mm -hmm. And then uh, go on to, I need a two part for you, three, eight. I'll start from here. Uh, oh, so, so if your eye, so, so if your, if your eye, even if it is your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out, throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, now this is what made me think about masturbation. And if your hand, even if it's your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off. Throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than the whole body to burn in hell. So when people tell me, well, masturbation, I mentioned it by a woman. Lust, eye, hand. Yeah, but how many people in here? I mean, for me, I mean, for me, for me, that's what, this was a turning point as far as what helped me actually get out of the addiction because I'm thinking, well, I, I can understand lust in your heart being sin, but up in masturbation, the word in the Bible. And I get young people always tell me all the time, nothing wrong with masturbation, there's no way in the Bible is a sin. I said, well, I, what does it sound like you're talking about if it's lust in your heart, your eye, and then your hand? And so for me, whether that's what the true meaning theologically was, for me, that hit me like a ton of bricks going, oh, wait a minute, this is wrong too. Because I had already gotten pornography out of the way, but I was justifying masturbation as being a way to save my marriage from being uh, right. tipped out. So that actually convicted me. Like you were saying, sometimes you read the Bible and it convicts yourself. And, and so between that, and then uh, Hebrews 10, 26, there, I'll get to that in a second. Hebrews 10, 26, when it says, if we willfully sin after we know the truth. Yep. Because that, those three verses, and 10, 26, uh, no sacrifice for willful sin. if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received the full knowledge of the truth, there is no other sacrifice that will cover these sins. There will be nothing to look forward to but a terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. That woke me up. Because <laughs> every time from that point on, I'm taking pictures off the wall and turning them down, I'm willfully sinning. I'm, I'm actually saying, excuse me, Lord, I need to sin right now. I'm actually saying, excuse me, I need to sin. Leave me right now. Yeah, leave, leave me, Holy Spirit, because I need to do a sin. And that thought of actually sin, that's what I'm actually telling the Lord to leave me for a minute. And then I'm reading, if we willfully sin, that and the Matthew, those two for me was the one-two punch that made me actually start looking for help. And it's the word, like I said, the word convicts you in different ways. And I've read those verses over and over again, but until I was actually looking for help, it actually made a point. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm into physical health and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a urologist mm -hmm. out here. And he was actually telling me that he encourages older men, mm -hmm. okay, who he gives Viagra or Cialis and that kind of stuff, right? Really? And who are not with somebody or with somebody, okay? To he encourages men to do to have masturbation for the right for the for the yeah. Now, <laughs> is the abuse who's right? Your urologist or the work? So, but they're, they're, they're talking about you know men Physical. who are, are not physically or have a woman or something. Okay. Why well, you got back anyway? Right. If you don't have a woman, dude, <laughs> you just sit right there. If you don't have a wife, you be taking my right. You, you, right. you, right. you, yes. you plan a way. Yes. They're yes. driven. Leave them alone. What he's talking about, though. <laughs> see, Fritch, guys are driven by. Finish that. Touch on that. But guys are driven by said. loneliness. See, yeah. you got to look okay. at guys being driven by loneliness. Right. Because see, right. loneliness is a heavy thing. If a guy, for whatever reason, cannot find a mate or someone to date, interested then that is a stress that turns on themselves. And so, whether it's Viagra to feel like, because see, if there is no woman around, and if, and if, if he's not in pornography, that, where is the erection? You don't have a woman to arouse you, and if you're not into pornography addiction or videos or anything, you, you got to have something, provide, a side effect of Viagra is arousal. That's, the, that's even though it's for actually thinning the blood from the blood clots, the side effect is a sexual that, arousal. That is all right. You, you, Pick up a magazine, look, turn on television, walk down the street, just post it, do everything. Well, this whole saying, country yeah. is based around that whole vision. But see, the thing, the, the thing that is the detrimental part now, even let's say from the medical part, that's recommended. Right. What is the, the addictive part 
At the height of my addiction, I was doing it six to seven times a day. That's how much, I mean, I was doing to the point where nothing was coming out and I was cramping. And I later read that that was a prostate cramping. Because what happens is the prostate is meant to gorge for sexual reproduction, have intercourse one time, and it takes a day or so forth to repair. If you have sex, uh, masturbation of sex more than once in the same day, the body starts borrowing energy from other organs to create the erection. Yeah. Which is why I wasn't realizing the sharp pain I was getting wow. in the groin area was the, the prostate cramping because it said, well, hey, I've done my job. What are you asking me for more for? Okay, well, let me go to the liver and get some energy. Okay, let me go over here to another organ and get some energy. So that's where it actually becomes a health detriment is when you're abusing it. So maybe like for the case where if it's a, for somebody, see, the fine line is if the person needs it medically for a reason like that, then if they're doing it well, once every couple of days, I can even see that. But the danger of it is, spiritually what it's doing is if you're trying to walk the walk, mm -hmm. you're saying, well, physically I need to take care of this, so for a minute I need to go over here. And, and it's almost like you're medically doing what I was choosing to do. I was choosing to do it for entertainment as the addiction part. But here, say the, medical, say the doctor says, we know, well, you know, for your prostate health, maybe you need to do that maybe uh, twice a week or something. And see, like I said, from all the reports I've read, as far as what is detrimental for the prostate, is when it's several times in one day. And your body will let you know because you feel sharp pains, like I was feeling pains, not knowing what the pain was. And, and, and the prostate is being overworked because it's only met for a okay, you know, once a day. So, uh, and the other thing as far as what the heart's doing, there's a, uh, actually in my workbook, so all my all books on uh, can be downloaded, but it's, there's a book called uh, The Hazard Side Effects of Sex. And what happens is, when you have sex, I used to be in college, I'm thinking I'm having sex for exercise. You know, I'm going to my workout, I don't need to work out, I'm just going to have sex to work out. Well, what your heart does in sex and what your heart does in training are two completely different things. You're training your heart to get stronger when you're exercising. But in sex, every time you get arousal, your heart or your blood pressure is going near stroke level. And then you climax. That's why when older guys have sex with a younger lady and they have a heart attack, is because just as you're about to peak climax, your blood pressure is almost at stroke level as far as the readings. Absolutely. So if you have any type of heart, anything, is going to go. And, and which leads me to this, this thing I, I, I got to tell you, I was curious. <coughs> extends. What? What? This thing called extends. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, the uh, thing uh, with uh, this uh, race car driver. Uh, hey, I feel like a young mannequin. I took extends. Oh, I can last oh, forever. Oh, I can have sex forever with right. extends. Now, you know, I have some long days. And I'm really wiped out sometimes. I said, well, let me just let me get some just in case, you know, and she's in the mood. And I'm like really wiped out. I took one, just one of those tablets. I felt my heart felt like it tripled in speed. I said, whoa. I mean, that had me thinking more than what was supposed to be happening. Because right. I felt like my heart was in my throat. And I called the people back and I said, you know what, I'm returning this stuff. He said, well, how old are you? Uh, I'm in my 50s. He said, well, actually, it's not for 50 year olds. I said, why do you have a 50 year old race car driver saying, I felt like a young man again? He says, we have a whole different product for people in their 50s because that's kind of hard in your heart. You think? <laughs> but you're sitting here having a 50 year old race car driver bragging about how extends makes him feel like he's in his 30s again. Yet you're telling me on the phone that it's bad for your heart in your 50s. But it's all about the money. Because what it does, whatever it does, it, extends, it, it, it affects your arousal. But during the arousal, it felt like my heart was going boom. The whole time I said, you know what? And they take, they take, they take two or three of these, and that's what one did. Yep. I just wanted to say, just directly, I mean, I went to a urologist and had the same recommendation <laughs> because I was having some problems and uh, some pains and stuff. And he asked me about my sexual life and history because the first thing they think is STD, actually. Mm -hmm. They think like, okay, you're having some problems, like what's your sex history, do you have an STD? I was like, nah, man, I haven't had sex in a year and a half, so mm -hmm. it ain't that, <laughs> you know? And uh, he's like, well, sometimes the plumbing gets, you know, stopped up, whatever, so you should <laughs> you well, you got the, right? You got the blue ball myth, right, too. Right, and I made up in my mind that I was not going to willfully do that. And and I continued to have some problems for about maybe a month and a half, maybe two months after uh, I went to that urologist. And after two months, never had a problem again. So to me, 
that was a test of my resolve. Am I going to lean on the Lord for the solution to this? Or am I going to follow the urologist way? Because if I were to do that, I was definitely going to fantasize and think back to past experiences. And all that was going to have to happen for me to, to, to masturbate. Whether it's, whether it's if, and if the word says, if I've said in my heart to, to and looked upon a woman and I lust after her, I've already committed in my heart, I would have had to do that <laughs> to, 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 to masturbate. So I made up in my mind that I'm going to bear this pain. I'm not going to, like all the other tests and stuff were negative. There was no, you know, cancer or whatever. And I made up my mind, and two months later, I never had a problem again. It's been over a year and a half. And so. <laughs> I think we gotta, whenever we come up against a situation where we, there's something that countervenes what we've seen in the Word, we need to go back to the Word and go back to the Lord. It comes back down to spiritual or physical, really what we're talking about, because if we're satisfying the body from a physical recommendation, what is that doing to your spiritual walk to achieve that physical recommendation? That's what it is, because if, if you have to get a lustful thought, obviously, to do masturbation, then that's pulling you away from what he's saying don't do. It's putting you into a lustful state. So, I mean, it really comes down to that, that teeter totter there. You had a, a question my my, my question is just if you decide to be celibate, you know you're there. Uh, um, physically, the, the thing goes if you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, to keep yourself in your line open. I mean, I, I, I would think it was recommended to masturbate like once a day to keep your mind open so when you meet that one, you grab it. You know what? Can you imagine, Clean, you have to touch yourself, your mind has not even had no activity for a year and a half. And you meet a woman, and you're ready now. You said just the right woman, right time, or let's say y'all elope and go to Vegas, whatever. Get married, and you ready. That line, it's going to take a while to open up that line. But see, it doesn't, it, it doesn't close up like concrete. I mean, it's like, <laughs> no, I'm saying, no, I had a young man asked me that. He said, hey, what about blue balls, man? Because I ain't going to get no blue balls. I got to do something regularly because you know, I, I ain't going to get, I said, man, that's, a, that's the number one myth. <laughs> blue balls, no such thing. But a lot of people think that if you don't see, when I finally got delivered from the masturbation and actually just said, okay, you know what? My wife on. Just forget all this other stuff. I suddenly had an enjoyment with my wife that I had never experienced before. Because it was now her. She was a source of my arousal, source of my affection. It was almost like I had just met her. Mm -hmm. Because it was like all this other stuff has been going on. And I didn't even realize it was deterring what the whole purpose of marriage is all about. Well, I mean, to me, the masturbation is not the same. It's your state of mind while you do it. So you can say, I'm going to think about car tires while I get this done. Why do you get this done once a day? It's your state of mind while you masturbate. No, car tires. I mean, it's your state of mind what's driving you. No, no, no. It's strictly physical. Like, I need to keep my mind open. You can do that. No, no, you see, uh, one of the other things with addiction was we get addicted to the endorphins in our brain. There, is there were times when I would be stressed out about an audition, yep. and I would masturbate to relax for the audition. Yep. I said, wait a minute, yeah. this way ain't about lust. This is about, I'm using the endorphins right. as a stress reliever, like some people take a drink, some people take a hit on a drug. That was my release to relax, which took it to a whole nother thing. Now, I said, well, now you're addicted to masturbation, but not just for lust. Now it's your drug of choice. You you getting high on your own brain's drugs, and and now I'm dealing with two different demons. <laughs> it's like right. the brain drugs and lust together. So that's why I was saying I had to get it under control because I was realizing I'm being pornography is gone now. I'm dealing with two things that I didn't even think were there. Yeah. I didn't even see it until money. pornography was gone. They were all working together. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. So, so, so first one last point. So either two things are gonna happen. You say I'm with this woman. I haven't done nothing. I'm celibate. Get to the point. Get married. Either two things gonna happen. I'm gonna come in two seconds. Or I ain't coming at all. So who's gonna say I've been waiting for this schedule for a year and a half? <laughs> <laughs> and then you can't do nothing. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm pretty sure. All my Jewish. I'm pretty sure not at all is not gonna be a choice. Tell me the time. Go see. What I was telling you when when the whole the whole activity was gone, it was just my wife and myself, and we had our schedule, whatever. Well, see, before with the masturbation, I had my own schedule, which was like you're saying, I was either every other day or whatever, 
And now I'm saying, okay, well, put that aside. Now, now, okay, wait, this is now whenever we're both in the mood. Okay, and that may not be every day. It could be a week. It might be every day. I mean, it changes by the week, you know. Mm -hmm. But not having that schedule in my head let me realize that when the time was right, everything went perfect. Exactly. So it wasn't about being afraid that it's not going to work. It was almost like when the, when, when it was the arousal time, mm -hmm. it worked as if it was... Nothing had happened, it might have been a week later or two weeks later, sometimes both of us six scheduled are crazy, whatever, it could be two weeks, I'm going, man, two weeks, oh man, what's going to happen? But <laughs> I'm thinking like an old man, I'm worried about what's happening based on my old schedule, but when something happened, it's like, oh, it, everything worked out as if it was just two days instead of two weeks. So the body, the body doesn't, you know, you have the guys who are in prison who think, oh, they've been in prison for a while and they come out and... They, act, they come out like enraged, like they gotta you know, go, go find somebody, just take something. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they have that fear. See, fear drives that, that if you're not using it, you're gonna lose it. And so the fear of that is what drives that kind of drive for people to attack or rape or whatever perversions they do from the violent side because it's my, I gotta get this because I hadn't had nothing in a long time. I gotta leave myself some kind of way. And for some reason, when they think that masturbation is not the choice they take, they take. The violent side of taking it from somebody, or whether it's even another male in prison or whatever, I mean, the, the, the whole thing is they're driven at a point where they're afraid that if they don't do something, that something's going to happen to their body. You had it for a long time, but I'm sorry, one more question. Um, when I was in my early uh, 20s, I, was, I got introduced to pornography, and I was in bondage to it for a couple of years. I knew it was wrong. And I was trying to be a Christian. I would get convicted when I was watching it. Mm -hmm. I would throw everything away. Mm -hmm. two, two weeks later, I would buy another group of movies. Mm -hmm. And um, I was trying in my own strength to overcome the sin. Mm -hmm. But then I realized I need God's help. Yes. Thank you. Yes, That's what you know. Man. That's what you know. That's what you know. That's what you know. And the thing was, when I would go without the pornography for a long time, I would start to feel like, yeah, I would feel good about myself. I would get my dignity back. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons I kept relapsing was I would start to get proud and sort of like in the Bible they said these people were, were righteous in themselves and right. they despised others. Mm -hmm. And I would start getting boastful thinking that it was my strength that got me out That's of That's what I thought earlier, yep. But then I realized as of late, it's the grace of God that got me. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's yeah. what the warfare we're talking about yeah, is all about. Yeah. That's what and you're feeling. Thing, and there was one thing that the devil, the, the devil doesn't play fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was one time I was in my, my room, there was a picture on the ground. I was like, what's this? It looked like a woman. I picked it up. There was a woman shaped the way I like it. The devil knows what we are. I told you. <laughs> yeah. She was half naked. Mm -hmm. She was posing like this. She had the hips and everything. And then when I looked at that picture, the, my flesh started talking to me. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I was back in the same rut with the mm -hmm. pornography. Mm -hmm. And I tried to fight against it, but I gave in. But what I should have done was cried out and say, God, help me. I just mm -hmm. say, help. Yeah, because see, as soon as you see it, yeah. I don't say uh, flee lustful thoughts, because as soon as you see it, we know as soon as you see something that reminds you of old days, it's identifying itself right there. Just like we said before, you see a young lady with lust on her. As soon as you know it's lust, you react right at that point. And, uh, and that, that's the key to, to that victory of control, because acting on it and not waiting to get involved, like we were saying with the lady at the, at the, at the car, okay. yeah. if you get to the point when you get too far and pass the point of no return, you go, man, I should have gone this far now. Oh, man, I got to do something now. But, but then you had the strength to stop it. Right. You still went over really the really right. because you almost went over the, right. <laughs> over the cliff. And the Lord still saw that. Right. And, he, and what you do when you, when you save yourself from something like that, you say, okay, now how can I avoid getting that close? And man, I was really close to going a little bit too far there. So the next time something like that happens, you kind of say, you know what? Stay in the car. <laughs> 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 Stay in the car. Yeah. <laughs> All right.